Calcium hypochlorite, or CaOCl2, is used as a bleaching agent. It is produced from sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and chlorine according to the following equation. How many grams of chlorine and sodium hydroxide react with 1067 grams of calcium hydroxide? And the second question is, how many grams of calcium hypochlorite are produced? So the first question, we're given a mass of calcium hydroxide, and we're asked to determine how many grams of the other two reactants are required to react with that given mass of calcium hydroxide. And in the second question, we're asked to determine how many grams of calcium hypochlorite are produced from the given amount of calcium hydroxide. So first we're going to look at a little flowchart of what we're going to have to do. So the only piece of data we have is the mass of CaOH2, calcium hydroxide. And so what we're going to do with this mass is we're going to convert it into moles of calcium hydroxide. Because once we have it in moles, then we can convert it into moles of anything else. Specifically, we want to convert it into moles of chlorine, and we'll also want to convert it into moles of sodium hydroxide. And then finally, we want the masses of these so then we're going to convert the moles of calc uh, the moles of uh, chlorine and moles of sodium hydroxide into mass of chlorine and in a separate calculation mass of sodium hydroxide and so at each step each arrow represents a conversion and so to do a conversion we need a conversion factor so when we're going from mass grams to moles, which is obviously in moles, we need the molar mass as our conversion factor because the molar mass relates grams and moles because the unit for molar mass is grams per mole. So because it relates the two, we can use it to convert from mass of calcium hydroxide to moles of calcium hydroxide. In the second arrow, the red arrow, we want to go from moles of, let's say, A to moles of B. And in order to do that, we use the stoichiometric coefficients. And these we get from the balanced chemical equation above. We use the coefficients in front because we know the molar relationships in the chemical reaction is expressed by those coefficients. So for example, we see a 2 in front of sodium hydroxide. So for every 1 mole of calcium hydroxide, we know that there's going to be twice as much sodium hydroxide. Same with chlorine. There's going to be twice as many moles of chlorine reacting as calcium hydroxide, but the same number of moles of chlorine as sodium hydroxide. In order to use these coefficients, of course, there's a 1 in front of the calcium hydroxide and uh, a 2 in front of sodium hydroxide and fluorine. And there's a 1 in front of the calcium hypochlorite and a 2 in front of sodium uh, chloride and a 2 in front of water. In order to use these coefficients, we have to be in terms of moles, which is why we do this first conversion step here. We have to be in terms of moles because what these coefficients represent is moles, so two moles of sodium hydroxide, one mole of calcium hydroxide, two moles of chlorine, one mole of calcium hypochlorite, and two moles of uh, sodium chloride and water each. These represent molar ratios, molar amounts. So in order to use the coefficients, we have to be in terms of moles. And then we can really just make a simple uh, conversion from moles of A to moles of B using uh, a ratio developed by these coefficients. Uh, 3 to 2 ratio, 1 to 2 ratio, 
as well, or a one to one ratio even. The molar fractions, the molar ratios, are represented by the coefficients. So we use the coefficients to uh, convert from one molar amount to another, either from reactant to another reactant, reactant to product, or we can even go backwards from products to reactants using these coefficients. So then once we have moles of Cl2 or moles of sodium hydroxide, we then once again use the molar mass which relates grams and moles to convert into mass of Cl2 and mass of NaOH because the question wants grams which is mass so we're going to do that final conversion and go from moles to mass using the molar mass and so let's do this first conversion and convert 1067 grams of calcium hydroxide, CaOH2. Let's convert that to moles of calcium hydroxide using our conversion factor, the molar mass. So we're going to multiply by the molar mass of calcium hydroxide. So one mole of calcium hydroxide contains some number of grams of calcium hydroxide. And the number of grams can be found adding up uh, one, the molar masses of one uh, calcium and two oxygens and two hydrogens. What we find is that's 74.09 grams of calcium hydroxide. And that's going to give us moles 14.40 moles of calcium hydroxide. So I'm trying to match these colors up here. So we start off with the mass of calcium hydroxide. We use the molar mass as our conversion factor. So 1067 divided by 74.09 and that's going to give us moles of calcium hydroxide. So now we have moles of calcium hydroxide and we use the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation, so the stoichiometric coefficients, and make a little ratio between uh, calcium hydroxide and chlorine and calcium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide. And we'll be able to get the number of moles of Cl2 and NaOH. So to get moles of NaOH, we have 14.40 moles of CaOH2 and our conversion factor is a fraction that um, relates moles of calcium hydroxide in the denominator because we want it to cancel out with this cal uh, the moles of calcium hydroxide over here and then we want moles of chlorine so that's going to be in our numerator and we use the coefficients to finish off this conversion factor so how many moles of calcium hydroxide we have one and for every one mole of calcium hydroxide we have two moles of chlorine and we just get that from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation up here 14.40 times 2 moles of calcium hydroxide cancel out and we're left with moles of chlorine so that's 28.80 moles of NaOH okay, let's zoom out a little to get more on the screen okay we're gonna do the same thing with sodium hydroxide 14.40 moles of CaOH2 we're going to multiply by a fraction with moles of CaOH2 in the denominator so that it goes away and moles of um, sodium hydroxide in the numerator and what we find is that it has the same molar ratio because the coefficients are a 2 and 1 again and we get 
0.80 moles of NaOH. I made a mistake up here, this should be Cl2. So now what we need to do is convert these molar values into masses so we can get grams of chlorine and grams of sodium hydroxide reacted with the 1067 grams of calcium hydroxide. And we're going to use the molar mass as our conversion factor to go from moles of Cl2 and NaOH to grams of these. We ran out of room, so let's go down. We had 28.80 uh, moles of Cl2. We're going to multiply that by the molar mass of Cl2, which is grams Cl2 per one mole of Cl2. The molar mass is 70.91 grams per mole. So 28.80 times 70.91 gives us 2,042 grams of Cl2. And then 28.80 moles of NaOH multiplied by the molar mass of NaOH, so that's how many grams per one mole of NaOH, and the molar mass of sodium hydroxide is 40, and 28.80 moles of NaOH, moles of NaOH cancels, and what we end up getting is a mass of 1,152 grams of NaOH. And so we were looking for the mass of chlorine and sodium hydroxide that reacted with 1,067 grams of calcium hydroxide. So these are the masses of chlorine and sodium hydroxide that reacted with the 1067 grams of calcium hydroxide. These were the masses reacting with the calcium hydroxide. And the process for this second part, or second question, is identical to the process for the first part. So we're going to start off with 14.40 moles of calcium hydroxide, and we're going to multiply that by a molar relationship between calcium hydroxide and calcium hypochlorite. So we want to get rid of uh, moles of calcium hydroxide, and then we want to get moles of calcium hypochlorite, CaOCl2, and we use the coefficients, which conveniently enough is a one-to-one -one ratio. And then we want to convert moles of calcium hypochlorite to grams of calcium hypochlorite. So we multiply by the molar mass calcium hypochlorite which relates moles of CaOCl2 uh, to grams CaOCl2. And so one mole of calcium hypochlorite, you can add up the values from the periodic table, and you'll find that it's 142.98 grams per mole. What you get when you multiply 14.40 moles of calcium hydroxide, moles of calcium hydroxide cancel out, and then moles of calcium hypochlorite cancel out. So 14.40 times 142.98 gives us uh, 2,059 grams of Ca. OCl2 produced. So as an overview of what happened in this problem, 
given the mass, calcium hydroxide reacted in this reaction. And our first step was to convert that into moles of calcium hydroxide so that we could transform that molar value using the ratio um, provided by the coefficients and turn that into moles of, CA, uh, of Cl2, NaOH, and ultimately even calcium hypochlorite, which was one of the products in the reaction. Once we have that in moles, it was simple to convert back to mass because we just used the molar mass as we did um, in our very first conversion um, going from mass of calcium hydroxide to moles of calcium hydroxide. In the final step, we also used the molar mass to uh, go in the opposite direction, going from moles to grams. In the end, we found that we had 2,042 grams of Cl2 reacting, 1,152 grams of NaOH reacting, and ultimately produced 2,059 grams of calcium hypochlorite. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, leave a comment if anything was confusing, and let me know how I can help you in the future.